Viewers, since the formation of the India Alliance, political pundits have sagaciously advised us not to give too much importance to the obvious contradictions between the Congress and the other opposition parties. The pundits say these parties don't have a choice but to put their differences and animosities on the back burner in order to confront the larger force that threatens their existence, that is Modi's BJP. Now, over the last one year, many of these contradictions between the India Alliance partners have erupted in public with varying degrees of drama, whether it is seat-sharing friction or outright divorces. But there is one particular flashpoint that has now assumed proportions that transcend and threaten the conventional wisdom offered by these political pundits that it is but natural for long-standing differences between these parties to sometimes manifest. And that is the animosity between the Congress and the left in Kerala. Specifically now, the ugly personal eruption between Rahul Gandhi and Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayam. For those of you who don't know, after being chided for weeks over his choice of choosing to fight again from Kerala instead of taking on the BJP frontally in UP or elsewhere, Rahul Gandhi has clearly had enough. And at a rally yesterday in Kerala, Rahul Gandhi let his irritation get the better of him perhaps and seemed to cross a line. Rahul Gandhi thundered from that stage. Why is the BJP not attacking the Kerala chief minister? Why are they not taking away his house, taking away his chief ministership, putting court cases on him, getting him interrogated by the enforcement directorate? and then virtually wondering out loud why Pinarayi Vijayan wasn't in jail. Rahul quipped, after all, two chief ministers are in jail today. Rahul's suggestion, they're barely veiled here, of course, is that Pinarayi Vijayan is hand in glove with the BJP. Now, the different dynamics of their Kerala relationship aside, by choosing to attack Pinarayi Vijayan on the issue of corruption, using the metaphor of central agency misuse, Rahul Gandhi has, in my view, exposed more about his own party and the state of the alliance than about Pinarayi Vijayan and the left. The political pundits will insist once again that Rahul and Pinarayi don't have a choice in the matter. They have, after all, been rivals in Kerala long before the India alliance became an existential necessity at the national Lok Sabha level. Now, throwing a few pot shots to keep the narrative of local rivalry burning is one thing. To outright accuse your frenemy of scams and corruption and skullduggery is, I submit, the equivalent of telling your voter that all those high-sounding ideological assurances are basically meaningless and hollow. That Rahul Gandhi's vaunted oath to take on injustice and to bring Nyai is an election platitude of the kind he accuses his rivals in the BJP of spewing as a matter of routine. The political pundits would counter by saying, what choice does Rahul Gandhi have? After all, the Congress-led UDF swept the Kerala Lok Sabha poll in 2019, taking 19 out of 20 seats, reducing the left front to a single measly seat in the Lok Sabha. Of the Congress's 52 seats in the Lok Sabha in 2019, viewer, nearly a third of those seats came from Kerala. Did you know that? Two years later, two years after 2019, Pinarayi Vijayan mounted a ferocious assembly campaign against the Congress, which fought the election with Rahul Gandhi as the omnipresent star campaigner. You remember all those viral videos with fishermen, etc. That was the 2021 assembly election in Kerala. Despite all those optics and energy by Team Rahul, Pinarayi Vijayan managed to defend his chief ministership and, more importantly, make history by ducking Kerala's revolving door tradition of throwing out incumbent governments every five years. So when the India Alliance was formed, there was no way these two parties, the Congress and the left, were ever going to somehow work with each other in Kerala at least. It made no sense either, since there was a tacit view that any such alignment wouldn't just be cynical, non-workable and ill-conceived, but would also provide the BJP with more space to make a footprint in Kerala where it has no footprint yet. And yet, Rahul and Pinarayi Vijayan are technically allies in the fight against Modi. The abrasions of such a contradiction have, in many ways, been softened by the fact, ironically, that Rahul's closest advisor, perhaps his, one of his closest advisors and mentors, isn't even from the Congress party. It's actually CPM General Secretary Sitaram Yechuri, who has had an outsized influence, perhaps, on the Rahul Congress's marked tilt in recent months to the extreme left.
You see the irony comes full circle here, so I don't really need to spell that out for you. The question is, does nursing this obvious paradox mean anything for the larger professed fight against a common enemy, the BJP? Once again, the political pundits would suggest that the Congress left acrimony in Kerala is a given. Why make such a big deal out of it? These kinds of things have happened before. That's never going to change. But perhaps it needn't have been a high-profile confrontation of the kind that we're talking about now, where the headlines constantly grate against this claimed unity and cohesion of the opposition alliance. And the only way that could have happened is if Rahul Gandhi had chosen to fight the Lok Sabha, not against a previously potential and now formal ally in Kerala, but the true enemy, the BJP. No matter who advised Rahul Gandhi, KC Venugopal, or whether it was Sitaram Yechuri himself, whether it was somebody else, that decision was finally Rahul Gandhi's own to fight in Wayanad in Kerala. Now, politics is littered with theatrics and compulsions and paradoxes, so nobody should be too surprised by this escalation between Rahul Gandhi and Pinarayi Vijayan. After all, they are rivals in Kerala. The question is, can the opposition persuade voters that their claims of unity of purpose and cause are enough to hold them together when they're at each other's throats long before a winner has even been chosen. That's the point I'm trying to make. Thanks for listening. With just days left for Lok Sabha elections in Kerala, war of words erupts between Congress MP Rahul Gandhi and Chief Minister Pinera Vijayan, souring ties between the India Bloc members. Addressing a public rally in Kori Code, Rahul Gandhi launched a scathing attack on Pinera Vijayan, wondering why the Chief Minister was not on the ED's radar despite corruption charges. My question is, why is the BJP not attacking the Chief Minister of Kerala? Why, why are they not taking away his house? taking away his chief ministership. And the second question is when the BJP is destroying the constitution, attacking democracy, destroying the institutions, why is the chief minister of Kerala attacking me 24-7? The Kerala chief minister has been sniffing at the Congress leader, questioning his decision to contest from Vayanad instead of focusing on the Hindi heartland. He has accused the Congress of playing soft Hindutva. Rahul Gandhi's challenger in Vainad, CPI candidate Annie Raja also trained guns on the sitting MP. But people are telling me, we voted for him and uh, the propaganda was he will be the prime minister. Okay, he could not uh, become the prime minister. But at least uh, he, he could have taken uh, the name of this constituency, which has only four letters uh, in Malayalam, Vayanad. He never, he never came and stood with us. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who's leading the BJP campaign, has accused the Congress and left of shadow boxing. कांग्रेस पार्टी लेप के लोगों को आतंकवादी कहती है लेकिन दिल्ली में ये लोग एक साथ बैठकर चुनावी गठजोड़ करते हैं एक ही थाली में खाते हैं और जो लेप वाले लोग कांग्रेस पर परिवारवाद के आरोप लगाते थे अब वो खुद उनसे Kerala goes to polls on April 26th. The Congress and the CPM, who are allies at the national level, are bitter rivals in the state. The BJP, which has never won a Lok Sabha seat in the state, is fighting to open its account. Bureau Report, India Today.